Hello everyone, how are you? I hope everyone is doing great. So let's talk about today's video. As we have already covered the introduction to Spring Framework in our previous video, let's see the two core components which are inversion of control and dependency injection today. So if you are new to the channel, please subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon. Also, share these videos with your community as much as possible. So without any further delay, let's start. Inversion of control is a core component of Spring Framework. Inversion of control is a software design principle which is independent of any language. It does not create any object but it describes the way in which object should be created. So why it is known as inversion of control? It is known as inversion of control because control of creating the object is inverted. So now instead of programmer controlling the creation of object that will be taken care by the framework itself. In Spring we have Spring IOC to achieve loose coupling between object dependencies. In Spring the IOC is implemented using dependency injection. As we develop code, we build objects and those objects are dependent on some other objects also. So let's take a real life example to understand the dependencies. Suppose you want to assemble a computer. So in that case, you will not be making all the things which are required in a computer. But what you will do, you will get it from some third party like RAM, you will get it from some company who is making it hard drive from some other company who is making it and similar for the other objects as well. In that way, you are dependent on those third party companies to make or assemble your computer. Now let's implement this with the coding in Java. So this computer class contains hard disk and RAM as two instance variables. So these two objects will be required if we want to create an object of computer. So how we are going to get the objects of hard disk and RAM? One way is to use new keyword and create object in computer class itself. Like here we have HD is equal to new Seagate hard disk. The moment you use new keyword to create the object, it becomes tightly coupled. Now, if in the future you want to change the company of hard disk, say to Hitachi, that means you want to use some other implementation of the hard disk which will require code changes and is not a good practice. So what we really need in this case, we need someone else to provide the object of dependent component and inject it to the main class. What is our main class? Computer is our main class. So for that we have container in Spring IOC which are the home for beans and will be responsible for injecting the required beans. We can say it's a pool of objects where objects of required hard disk implementations are present and will be injected so that we do not need to use new keyword or tightly couple it with our computer class. But the question is how container will come to know where to inject which object. For that we must do the configuration. So configuration is the main concept in Spring Framework. Now let's see the ways to configure the dependency injection in Spring. We can do it in two ways. One is using XML and second is using annotations. In the beginning Spring was only using XML to configure these things in an XML file. There we can mention that if someone is asking for a hard disk then give this specific object or this specific implementations object and inject to the requester. With this if we want to change the implementation in the future we just need to update that XML and there will not be any code level changes. This will make it loosely coupled. But still as a developer we do not want to concentrate more on the configuration side. And for that we have Spring Boot which minimizes the configuration required so that you can concentrate more on the business logic implementation. We will discuss the Spring Boot as well in the separate series once we are done with this Spring Framework. So as of now you can understand that Spring Boot will take away all the boilerplate configuration which we require in a Spring application. 
Now, before we dive into complete implementation using one example, let's understand the type of spring dependency injection. So there are two types of uh, dependency injection. First one is setter dependency injection and second is constructor dependency injection. In setter dependency injection, the dependency injection will be injected with the help of setter or getter methods. But in case of constructor dependency injection, it will be injected with the help of constructor. So whatever dependency that we want to inject, those will be part of the constructor parameter in this case. Now let's see a complete example with all the components where we will use dependency injection. Let's say we want to send an email message and an SMS to the users. For dependency injection, we need to have a base interface for these services. So I have this message service interface with single method declaration for sending message which accepts two parameters. One is the message and second one is the destination. Now this is the first implementation where email service is implementing message service interface and provided its own implementation to send a message. So in this we can implement the email related operations in the overridden method to send emails as messages. Similarly, we have this SMS service. It is also implementing the message service and provided its own implementation. So in this, we can implement the SMS related operations in the overridden method to send a message. Now let's see a consumer class for the created services. Now in the consumer class, we will be using an object of message service interface. And there are two ways of injecting the dependencies of service to the consumer. One is using annotations and other one is without annotation. I will cover one of the approaches and leave the other one with you for practice and exploration. Do try that and let me know in the comment section. Here we have message service as instance variable and injection is being done using the setter function. And in the process message function, we are using the injected service to call the send message function. So now we have two different implementation of message service and whichever uh, implementation is configured though that particular um, implementation will be injected to this consumer class and using service dot send message the message of that implementation will be called. Now we need to define the XML file so that Spring can understand when to inject which component. So for that we need to create uh, an XML file. File name can be anything. Here first bean is email. Using this configuration Spring container will create a bean of email service and manage its life cycle also. Second bean is XML app and in that we are specifying the dependency as email. And also we are specifying it is using setter injection. This is done using property tag. Similarly, if we want to inject using constructor, then we need to define the ref details under constructor tag itself. This configuration XML file is placed in the source directory so that it will be in the classes directory after the build. Now as all the required classes and configurations are in place, Let's see how to use the XML based configuration with a simple client program. So for that class path XML application context is used to get the application context object by providing the configuration file path as the path is as the file is present in the class path itself. So we do not need to provide the complete path here. Only the file name will also work. This particular context have overloaded constructors and we can provide multiple config files also. Next we have context.getBean method which will return the bean from container pool for the specified class. The returned bean will be wired with email service and send message function of email service will be called from the process message function. Why? Because if you see in the XML we have bound these two together the email will be injected whenever message service class implementation is required as per this configuration so this is how the required dependency of service class is injected to the main application and that was completely taken care by spring ioc container as we can see we have not used the new keyword anywhere to create the object so using this configuration which is present in the XML here itself, 
first it is creating uh, a bean of uh, email service with the id email storing it in its pool and when xml application is requesting it as a setter uh, injection then ioc container is injecting this particular bean to this X xml app itself that's it for this video please do comment your feedback also don't forget to share it with your community in our next session we will see what are application context and bean factory in more detail those two act as the core of ioc those are the containers which are actually managing the complete life cycle of all the beans which are present in spring framework so till then keep learning see you next time